the Mega Money FLW Championship was a showdown of some of the sport's best and brightest anglers. The winner, a rookie from the West. Luke Clausen is our champion. Larry Nixon finds out how the kid did it. Next on the hit drama FLW Outdoors. Yes, sir, that's what we're looking for, my friend. Ball game, baby. <laughs> yeah. He could have one more in. Here it does. We have a champion. Yeah. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Hallelujah! And welcome everybody to the FLW Championship. We have just crowned a champion from Spokane, Washington, Luke Clausen. You've got to be elated. Look at this crowd, Luke. We're just amazed. I cannot believe it. It's blowing me away. I, I didn't think it was going to happen. you got to have legs like rubber. Oh, I saw Larry this morning, and I was so stressed out this morning I couldn't cast. I was skipping under docks. I only made about one out of every seven under the dock this morning. I couldn't even fish. I told Taylor, I said, I'm shocked he just done a tremendous job because this morning he was nervous. Oh, I was a mess. I couldn't fish. <laughs> I couldn't cast. I couldn't you got me anything. crying. I'm so excited for oh. you. Luke, you know your career earnings just went from 31000 to 531000 <laughs> A little bit of an increase. <laughs> <laughs> this is what bass fishing can do for you. <laughs> How does a kid from Spokane get that done, Luke? Oh, it's unbelievable. I've, I've fished all my life. I've worked really hard at it. i got to thank my dad. What, just a great supporter of mine. Got me into fishing. Got me started. Oh, it's just been awesome. Coming back here, I started fishing back east and fished with a lot of these big-name guys. And It's great to fish against a company like this and really succeed. It's awesome. Uh, Larry Nixon, you'll have questions for Luke a little bit later, okay? Hang tight right there. Here's a look back at how he did it. Luke Lawson winning the 2004 FLW Championship. what you fish for all year right here and uh, 10 minutes before takeoff you, you can't hardly cut the air it's so thick with the drilling out here but uh, this is what we live for right here. you try to put that aside and just say you're gonna go fishing but it's you know about every five seconds that 500,000 keeps popping up in your head snapshots of the first hours of the 2004 FLW championship Mark Rose making last-second adjustments Kellogg's pro Clark Wenlet flipping boat docks and catching his second keeper Lee Bailey on the dock pattern two and knocking down his second fish. Local favorite Todd Airy seconds after losing a nice spotted bass. And Airy's opponent, Yamaha pro Greg Hackney, cranking and coming up a little short. Hours later at the weigh-in stage, it's evident both have struggled, but bracket-style competition can be forgiving, and Hackney only trails Airy by nine ounces. The brackets can be punishing, too. Witness the Shad Skank Luke Clausen pairing. Skank has the day's second biggest sack, 13-14. Trailing only, that's right, Clawson with 14-4. That's just the way it goes, and you know how it is coming into the tournament. So, I mean, if you're fishing good, you know, if it's meant to be, then you're going to make it to Friday's round. For many pros, first day weights were lower than expected. Even for Angler of the Year Shin Fukai, who trails 48-seated Chad Grigsby by more than two pounds. The biggest surprise may have come from co-angler Greg Gulledge, Posting 15-11, tops on both sides of the competition. Day two. One of the most intense competitors on the FLW Tour has played her hand in this championship. Mother Nature is the 49th finalist in this field of pros, and the anglers today will have to deal with some cooler temperatures and some rain. But you know the saying, the worse the conditions, the better the fishing. These pros didn't let the rain dampen their quest for some top-level, in-your-face action. In the front of that boat, Dave Lefebvre is flipping the grass and catching quality. Just four minutes after his first, number two bit, and the Kellogg's Pro began filling up his live well. Classic champ and Yamaha Pro Takahiro Omori is alternating between a jig and a buzzbait. 
His first keeper took the top water offering right at the boat. But at the weigh-in, Takahiro fell to Arkansas's Mark Rose. Remember Dave LaFebra? His two early keepers bolstered his five-fish limit and eliminated Alabama's Greg Pugh. The nail-biter of the day two weigh-in came down to the narrowest of margins and eliminated another Alabama native, Tyson Pro Todd Airy. 18 pounds, 15 ounces, by tiebreaker, second seed moves forward. Hackney advanced to face Luke Clawson in the second round. Other headliners advancing include Clark Wendland, David Walker, Dean Rojas, and Shinichi Fukai. Round two is when our field of 24 gets cut to 12. It's the final day of head-to-head -head fishing. Luke Clawson took on Greg Hackney and prevailed. In fact, several big names bowed out in the semifinals, including Dean Rojas and Angler of the Year Shinichi Fukai, who lost to Mickey Bruce. The day produced 12 winners who would fish the final day for the paycheck of a lifetime. Championship day is always special. Everyone starts at 08, so the past is the past. You've got to catch them every day to win the FLW championship, and Luke Clawson did so. His big catches continued on the final day. And while several made a run at the top, only one angler challenged Clawson's claim at the title. It would come down to ounces when BF Goodrich Pro Scott Martin brought up his last fish. That fish must be four pounds and five ounces to claim the championship. If not, Luke Clawson will be our winner. Let's see what you got, Scott Martin. Look for four pounds, five ounces for Scott Martin. He's got a good one. This is our big moment right here. Weighs in at three pounds, 14 ounces. Luke Clawson is our champion. Luke Clawson, your winner of the 2004 FLW Tour Championship. Come center stage, Luke, and look at this crowd. Luke Clawson, here is your check. $500,000, Richard, coming from Forest Wood. What was it like to raise that check? Oh, it was pretty awesome. I, I never really thought it was going to happen. I still have, it hasn't sunk into me yet, I don't think. All right, you've got media obligations. Go take care of them. More questions from Larry Nixon a bit later. All right. Here's your champion, everybody, you. Luke Lawson, Spokane, Washington, Thanks, half Larry. a million dollars richer. More to come, everybody, on FLW Outdoors from Birmingham, Alabama. Stay tuned for more. Here's this week's Field and Stream trivia question. Excluding Steve Daniel in the FLW's first season, who was the last rookie to win the FLW championship? Was it David Fritz in 1997, Davey Hyde in 98, Daryl Robertson in 99, or John Sappington in 2002? The answer coming up on FLW Outdoors. Your field and stream trivia answer is none of the above. Luke Clawson is the first rookie to win the FLW's season-ending championship. And welcome back to FLW Outdoors. We're in Birmingham, Alabama, the $1.5 million FLW championship. Taylor Carr and Larry Nixon and our third place finisher, Larry, Anthony Gagliardi. You fished well, Anthony. I did. I had a, I had a good practice and a, and a fished a good tournament. I just I didn't catch the fish that I needed to today. I had an opportunity to do well, and I caught some big fish early. It just, it just wasn't meant to be. We've got a lot of viewers out there, and we want to teach them how to catch a bass on the Coosa River in August. And just what did you do this week to catch your fish? You know, I had, I had some unique places. I was, the fish that I caught during the tournament came mostly off secondary points and they were receiving very little pressure from the tournament fishermen. Most people were either fishing the bank or if they were fishing offshore cranking or Carolina rigging, they were, they were fishing out on the main river main lake. lake. And I felt like with the colder weather that we had come in, the fish were almost in transition. I'm almost like a fall pattern. A lot of the shad was moving up to the backs of the creeks. And, and if I could find a hump or a point in a creek that had bait fish in the creek, there would be fish on it. And I just think they were using it as a stopping ground coming in and coming out. And what, what lure were you catching most of your fish on throughout the tournament? I was, either, I was either throwing a drop shot if the brush wasn't too thick. If the, if the brush was thick, I was throwing an eighth ounce Texas rig trick worm. 
And then I was also throwing a crankbait. I did, that's what I did a lot in practice. I, I was through the crankbait, not only to catch fish on it, but just to try to locate brush piles. And my two best spots that I had in the tournament, I found I found with the crankbait. And just got hung and, up and, decided, and, did, and then went back and fished yeah, with the worm. Yeah, went back and fished with the worm, and that's how I ended up catching them. Oh, well, that's good. That's Anthony, outstanding. Anthony's father, Mike, watched him fish today, and I think he was as on edge as you were, Anthony. I'm sure I'm sure he was. I had a couple friends out there with him also, and, and they, they were hooting and hollering every time I caught one. And that's really neat to have people out there pulling for you. And, just keeps your spirits up and keeps you focused and keeps you pumped and just makes me fish harder. Yeah, Larry, he's had a great season. He won on Kentucky Lake and now oh. third place in the championship. Anthony Gagliardi, good job. Thank you. All right, let's check the, great the drama now. Here we go. Some of the drama from the FLW Championship on Lake Logan Martin. Seven months ago at Lake Okeechobee, 200 FLW pros had a distant goal. Reach the season-ending championship on Lake Logan Martin and compete for the biggest guaranteed paycheck in fishing history. The grueling season took its toll on those 200 pros, as did the tough qualifying rounds in Birmingham. The 12 who remain are about to fish a single day in quest of a life-changing win. Yeah, today's the day. Today's the day where it counts. You psyched? Yeah, I'm excited. Hopefully I can catch them like I have been catching them. Be a lot richer of a man after the day if it happens. I don't know, I'm a little bit nervous. One big bite that I could lose or catch that could make a difference and a lot of money. Uh, I'm really looking, I'm looking forward to today. I mean, this is an opportunity of a lifetime to be in this position and fish against 11 guys to win half a million dollars. I mean, that's a life-changing event. Secret to it is getting a couple kickers. You can get that and you'll be right there. I'm nervous, but I tell you what, it doesn't get much better than this. This is unbelievable. I can't even believe it. Fishing for half a million dollars against 11 other guys. <laughs> Just unbelievable. This is what I signed up for. It's what everyone signed up for, but only a dozen get to experience. Coming up, Anthony Gagliardi gets on the kind of fish that big money dreams are made of. FLW Outdoors is brought to you by Walmart, always low prices, always. By Yamaha Outboards. By Kellogg's, the best to you each morning. And by Lay's, bet you can't eat just one. Hi, I'm Emily Schaefer, Team Emmonwood Pro from Mount Juliet, Tennessee. It's time to play today's trivia where you can go online and win. In 2003, two Team Evanrude members won prestigious Angler of the Year awards, one on the FLW Tour and the other on the RCL Tour. Who were they? Dan Moorhead and Jason Shakurit? Dan Moorhead and Larry Nixon? Larry Nixon and Tommy Scarless? Eric Olson and Tommy Scarless? To win, log on to FLWOutdoors.com. The winner is randomly drawn from all correct answers. Winners receive a die-cast replica of an FLW Outdoors sponsor boat. Value $185. And we're back in Birmingham on FLW Outdoors. Taylor Carr with Larry Nixon, who just crowned a champion. Luke Lawson, half a million dollars richer. Uh, Larry, this is an amazing week for Ranger Boats. They unveiled the Comanche Z Series boat. Everybody loved it here. But you think of Ranger, and it goes back to the 60s. And it goes back to Forrest Wood and Nina Wood, who I know were a big part of your life in those days. Oh, man. One of the greatest things that ever happened in my life was back about 1967, my dad went up to Flippin, Arkansas and bought a brand new Ranger. And I think it was number 29 that Forrest man. Wood ever built. And me and that boat fell in love. And I'll tell you what, if it wasn't for that boat, I probably wouldn't be standing here right now. They have really been all along the whole ride of the history of bass fishing with their incredible Ranger boats. They really have. Ranger has been in my life. And even though I'm sponsored by Stratus, but, you know, Ranger has been a part of my bass fishing since the very beginning. You'll enjoy this, Larry. Take a look. Forrest and Nina Wood talk about the early days and bring us now to 2004. Do you remember coming to town the first time? Came to town in a Springfield wagon with my grandfather on a bale of cotton to the cotton gin to have the cotton gin. And that's the first trip I remember going to flip it and was on a bale of cotton. We raised it and picked it right out behind the house here. 
We have seen remarkable changes in our lifetime from horse and buggy days to being on the moon and people getting paid to fish. Can you imagine getting paid to fish? Things have changed dramatically. When Forrest Woods started Ranger Boats, professional bass fishing was in its infancy. Forrest was a competitor and in his spare time built a few boats. Of course, I didn't know anything about sales, but I just asked everybody there if they wanted to buy a boat, and two or three of them did, and so I wrote them up an order right quick on whatever I had to ride on. Actually, we got in business just building custom boat orders. The name Ranger seemed to come naturally. We did a focus group study kind of a thing, though we didn't know what focus groups were then. And um, <laughs> everybody wrote down a name they thought would be good for the boats, but we were infatuated with the Texas Rangers history and the Army Rangers were kind of new then, but they were in the news a lot, so we decided Ranger would be a good name for the boats, and, uh, or at least I did, and uh, since I was president, well, I got to have my way, I guess. And so we made six <laughs> Ranger boats in 68 in the back of the city hall, in the back of a filling station, actually, a little garage there. Within two years, production reached 1,200. A fire in 1971 wiped out almost everything. But Forrest and Nina and a dedicated workforce brought Ranger back stronger than ever, and they spent the next 30 years building the best bass boats on the water. And now back to the money. Does Forrest remember what the winner got in the first major tournament he entered? Oh, the first prize is probably a big trophy. We have a few trophies that we got, and trophies were really important in those days. A uh, little bit of money, a few hundred dollars generally, and maybe first prize would be a thousand dollars in some of the tournaments. That'd be a big one. And then along by the mid 80s or so, I won a tournament in New York, and uh, total winnings was about fourteen thousand dollars, I guess, for winning the tournament there. And a big part of that was a Ranger boat that we were given for first prize, but. I was proud to win it anyway. Now, Larry, that's how much Forrest Wood meant to bass fishing. The owner of Ranger Boats won a Ranger Boat. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you what, I remember when he won that boat, and it was so funny. Here the man is that builds them, and he wins his own product. The sport has come a long way since then. Forrest Wood, unbelievable individual. When we come back, Banana Boat Pro Kevin Vida on FLW Outdoors. In the banana boat, Kevin Vida from Clare, Michigan. Uh, he's had a great first two rounds. And Kevin, you're doing something a bit different here, throwing a swimming jig. I'm moving at a pace where it sinks down to about four to six feet, the jig. And uh, it seems to be real key. If I go a little faster, I can't get bit on it up high. And if I go a little slower, it seems to get below the, below the fish. I don't know if that was a bite or not. If it's been, been kind of slow this morning, I've had six bites, but I've only put two in the boat. I know Tom Monsoor likes to also throw a swimming jig. Is it something about you northern guys that makes that comfortable for you? Oh, uh, Tom Monsoor started it, started it all. I've never thrown one, really, until this tournament. What made you think it would work on this lake? Well, it, I actually didn't come here to intend it, but I was throwing a crankbait along the docks, and I noticed that I'd get bit on a crankbait if I stopped it, and it started flowing upwards. So I, I knew the fish were suspended up under the docks and a lot of times the easiest way to catch a suspended fish is to swim something by its nose and that's what this jig is doing. This morning before launch a lot of the anglers said the weights might be lower today because of boat traffic and the fish being hit pretty hard. You agree with that Kevin? Yeah I, I thought like what Clark said this morning I really thought 14 pounds you'd have a shot at it. Uh, you know you can see a 17 pound bag come in it's going to be a perfect day I think for somebody and but uh, 12 to 14. That's what I, I think I agree with that. Now, Kevin, you've been real successful in ever starts, but you've never won an FLW event. Wouldn't it be nice to crack through with a half million dollar win for your first one? Oh, that would be the only way to do it. If I never won another one the rest of my life, I'd be a happy camper. <laughs> hey, if you win, I'm going I'm to hold you to that. I bet you say, no, you want to win the next one, too. <laughs> I, I would. <laughs> Thank you.
The convention center in Birmingham is still buzzing here at the FLW Championship. Luke Lawson was your winner, but Larry Nixon, Scott Martin fished awfully well too, and you finished second place, Scott. Oh, I'm, I'm very happy with it. You know, it's $500,000 is a tremendous amount of money, life-changing, matter of fact. But I fished I fish perfect today. I, I mean, I have no regrets at all. I, I managed my time well. Everywhere I went worked, and I just, I did well. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with it. I didn't lose any fish, so, you know, he legitimately beat, and he, he, he deserved to win for sure. We want to know where you went. We couldn't find you today. Well, I was, I was moving. The first couple of days of practice, I, I tried the little worm, and it was just takes too long, and you catch a lot of little fish. So I was fishing real fast on these docks, trying to get a reaction bite, and that's what these big fish reacted on. So I wouldn't spend much more than five minutes on a dock, and I was to the next one. And, uh, and that was my key, so it was probably hard to find me. I was all over the place. What lure was you throwing? Well, two, two lures. I was actually throwing um, a, a regular jig with a football head and, uh, and then also a swim bait, believe it or not. It was there actually you kind go. Of a You're little, swimming a jig also. Well, it wasn't a swimming jig. It was actually a minnow-bodied bait with a soft uh, tail on it and everything. It looks just like a shad. And actually, these fish No name just, for it? It's a, it's a Matsuo swim bait is what it is. Oh, a regular swim bait. It's a swim uh, bait. I don't, a I don't know what you're talking about. Matsuo swim bait. Smaller version of the ones they throw in California? Exactly. It was about a, it was about a four inch long, about a half ounce, and I'd pitch it up and I'd count it down and I'd try to work that water column between 12, 6 to 12 feet basically. If it was if it was a 25 foot dock, I'd only let it go down about 12 feet and I'd rip it up and swim it, rip it up and swim it, and these fish were reacting on it. And what I noticed in practice was that there was oh, big boy. shad hanging around these docks. Did you see those big gizzard shad? And the shad were the exact size of the bait. And I think that's what these big spots were keying on. The little spots were eating the smaller shad and eating the smaller little worms that you throw in there, but these, the big spots, the ones you need to win the tournament were eating the big bait. You don't have nothing to be ashamed of, does he, Taylor? That was just outstanding. Thank you very much. This BF Goodrich Pro understands fishing, everybody. Scott Martin, second place, $50,000, and you won at Champlain this year. You've had an outstanding season. Thank you. All right, now more of the drama from the FLW Championship on Lake Logan Martin. In the early going on Logan Martin, Luke Clawson nets the day's first fish and then minutes later barely misses keeper number two on a spinnerbait. I saw that was like a four or five pounder just came out and ate my spinnerbait and somehow I never hooked it. BF Goodrich Pro Scott Martin is flipping a tube and gets his first keeper minutes later. Watch the cast that Kellogg's Pro Clark Wenlet makes, flipping a white jig around a boat into hard to reach places. Clark already has one fish in the boat and he'll have two if he can land this one. It's his second keeper, and it gives Clark just over three pounds and the early lead. Anthony Gagliardi is doing something a bit different, pulling a Texas rig green pumpkin trick worm through a brush pile. He's hoping to get a small limit and then go to his bigger fish, crank baiting offshore structure. Holy cow, that's a big one. Anthony's game plan is about to look brilliant. His small fish turns yeah. out to be a four pounder. Yes. That's what I'm looking for right there. The brush pile is in about eight feet of water on an inside turn of a secondary point. It's just one, it's one of those places that, that catches them in transition, I think. It, they see it when, they stop, when they're swimming through and they stop on it for a little while. And, and I think that's why I've been able to catch I've caught a fish off this one every single day. Checking the competition, Banana Boat Pro Kevin Vida has two fish for two pounds. Mickey Bruce has one for a pound and a half. Glenn Brown has a one pounder, as does Charlie Ingram. And Clark Wenlet gets his third. On the leaderboard, it's Gagliardi, Wenlet, Vida, and Bruce. And watch out for Gagliardi. His brush pile is producing again. Oh my gosh. Even though it's early, Gagliardi knows landing this fish is critical to his championship hopes. The largemouth goes four and a half pounds, giving Anthony nine and a half for the final and a big early lead. That's the biggest fish I've caught since I've been here. Unbelievable. If I catch three decent fish to go along with those, I mean, that is. I'd have to believe that I had a shot to, a shot to win it, so I got to keep my composure. I know it's hard right now, but I'll settle back down here in a minute and, and we'll start pushing slow again. Coming up, Scott Martin and Luke Lawson turn it on, and the competition on Logan Martin gets intense. 
FLW Outdoors is brought to you by U.S. Bank, home of the five-star service guarantee. By Snickers, going fishing? Grab a Snickers. By International Delight, delight in every cup. And by Weed Eater, yards ahead, season after season. And welcome back to Birmingham. Taylor Carr with Larry Nixon. We just crowned a champion here at the FLW Championship. We also heard from Scott Martin, who finished second. And, Larry, that is one talented fishing family. Uh, it really is. You know, he took right after his mom and dad. Mary Ann's won several tournaments. And Roland, we all know what he's done. And now look at Scott. He's just incredible. All right, more from Scott Martin. Fishing 101 on a problem that plagues all anglers, Larry, even you once in a while. <laughs> how to avoid a backlash. Pick them out. Hi, I'm Scott Martin. Today I'm going to give you some tips on a bait casting reel. You know, as I've traveled around the country and fished with so many different people, I've noticed that people are afraid of a bait casting reel. They put it up due to frustration with backlash. But I know a few good tips that's going to help you get more enjoyment out of your bait casting reel. So let me show you how to get started with getting your reel adjusted. You've got your magnetic control on the left, and I like to take a fairly heavy lure, like this spinner bait here. It's about a half ounce spinner bait. I like to reel it up and hold my rod directly out and loosen everything up pretty good to push the button on my reel and let it fall free. It fell a little fast that time. It started off slow and progressively got faster. That tells me that it's not adjusted correctly yet. So I'm gonna reel it up again, and I'm gonna take this dial and maybe go halfway. And I'm gonna do the same fall again it did better. It started to fall slow and it sped up. I still need to tighten it up just a little bit more, so I'm going to tighten it over just a little bit more, push the button down again, and fall. Now that time it fell pretty steady the entire time. That tells me I'm real close to having my reel adjusted. The next thing I'm going to do is start making some casts. Now you're ready to get started trying to cast it. But always keep in mind that you're going to have to constantly adjust your reel throughout the day depending on your bait size and the wind direction. If you're casting into the wind, you're going to want to tighten up your brake and your magnetic control a little bit. And if you're throwing with the wind, you can loosen it up to get a little extra distance. The other important thing when you cast is being smooth with your cast. The worst mistake you can make is go back and stop. I like to do one fluid motion the entire time. You go back and go smooth forward. If you go back too fast and stop and then go forward too fast, you'll create too much speed on the spool and not enough speed on your lure. So with those tips, I guarantee you're going to get a lot more enjoyment out of your bait casting reel. Larry, a lot of young guns in this event, but one angler's fished with you for quite a while. That's Buford, Georgia's Mickey Bruce. Mickey Bruce, a good friend of mine and a great fisherman. And this morning, I was with him on his first three stops. Let's take a look now. Larry Nixon talking to Mickey Bruce on the water. Right now I'm out here with Mickey Bruce and he's consistently been on good fish all week. His partner yesterday won the amateur side with 13 pounds and he's caught good quality fish all week. And Mickey, if you would, tell me a little bit about how deep you've been fishing and the different types of baits you've been throwing. Well, I got a couple of patterns been working so far this week. I've been catching some good quality fish on a big DD-22 crankbait. Not many, you know, a couple of each day. But as the tournament has went on from the fishing pressure in the front coming through, the fish have gradually got deeper and deeper, and I've had to resort to a, a shaky head. I'm throwing a, a, a brush hog shaky, shaky head. It's a Fred's head, is what it's known, with a, a full length uh, zoom trick worm on it. And the other, other style is a drop shot. This drop shot can cover a lot more water and I can keep it on bottom a little bit better. And it's just an old brown worm with a chartreuse belly on it. But the, the, the problem is, is keeping up with these fish. They kind of roam around and, and chase the bait. And, and if, if, you can, if you rely on one little spot on, this, on, a, on an area, you're going to be lost out because the fish can constantly move. So what I'm trying to do this morning is see where they've moved to. There was a whole school of fish here yesterday. That's one of the things that you have to contend with when you're fishing for spotted bass on these rivers and lakes is they tend to move around a lot and you know a good deep water fisherman he just keeps hunting them and that's what Mickey's doing right here throwing that drop shot. He's got 
four or five places, structure places that he's fishing, and uh, he's catching a lot of his bigger fish on a, on a DD-22, uh, which is a big deep diving crankbait. And then he's having to resort to either a Carolina rig or a drop shot or a, what we call a shaky head, which is a jig head type worm. And he's mainly fishing for spotted bass. And if you can't get the bigger fish to hit that crankbait, then he drops back to that worm or the drop shot, and that's how he catches his other fish. Well, Larry, Mickey Bruce didn't win, but he has had an outstanding career. He's been in the top 10 a number of times. Mickey is a great fisherman, and he loves to fish structure. All right, I'm ready to talk more to our winner, Luke Lawson, who won this event. Half a million dollars, that's coming up next. Larry talks with Luke Lawson on FLW Outdoors. What a day in Birmingham at the FLW Championship, and what a day for Luke Clawson from Spokane, Washington. Larry Nixon, half a million dollar winner, Luke Clawson. I tell you what, he fished a great tournament. He pulled two out of that live well that I didn't dream he had in there after being with him this morning. I followed him for about an hour this morning, and, and he, he was, I think he had a little jitters. Yeah, I'm not sure if I was more nervous about the 500,000 or Larry Nixon watching me try to fish. <laughs> oh, shoot, that's why I said, I'm going straight in there, and we're going to do our interview, and I'm going to leave him alone because I know it's got to be bothering him a little bit. Well, I want to know your pattern. You did such a good job catching them fish all week, and I, I kind of know what kind of docks you was fishing, but tell us just a little bit about what pound test line and your lure and the depth of water that you were really keying on. Really, when it was sunny, I was fishing shallower docks, probably six to eight feet at the end of them, at the, the maximum. Um, and a lot of flat bank docks that came out of ways that were piers with a lot of shade cover. I was fishing a little eighth and 16th ounce jig heads on a little prototype finesse worm uh, with six and eight pound uh, sunline fluorocarbon line. Skipping it way back up under there. A lot of them when it got real sunny in the afternoon, I'd catch them way in the backs. The morning was probably the easiest time to catch them because you could go just along the back side of the dock and they were always on the shallow pilings and they were real aggressive. They hit it on the fall. Huh. Now, when you talk about a prototype worm, is that kind of like a little finesse worm, a, a little hand pour? Yeah, it's not a hand pour, but it's like that. It's a little straight tail worm, about four inches long. What color? Green pumpkin. Just green kept pumpkin. it simple. I might know that everything, they, everything in Alabama eats green pumpkin. <laughs> but the light head, now, that had to be a key because I know you were fishing around probably two or three that were of really good fishermen, and yet you caught fish behind them. Yeah, every day. There's so much pressure on this lake. Uh, I was fishing behind people every day, locals and tournament guys, and I really felt that was key. There were certain docks that I'd caught them on before, and knew that I could go with that six pound line and 16th ounce head on those docks after I fished the heavier stuff and get one or two more bites. I guarantee you that 16th ounce head made a big difference. I, I just know that because I know how these fish in this lake are. Anytime they suspend, a lot of times that slower fall down through that, that suspending column and they'll bite it. Right, I was getting probably a fourth of my bites on the fall and a lot of them immediately after hit the bottom. I don't know if those are fish that followed it down or not. I guess the first day I probably had half of my bites on the fall, though it was really evident they were suspended. You'd cast out there and your line would immediately be racing off or else back under the dock. Your sack of fish was 1410, which would have been the best all week. Did you think you had it won? I thought I had about 13, 13 and a half coming in here. I was so scared. I had one 13 incher I couldn't call all day. I tried and tried and I could never get rid of it. And uh, I thought for sure that was going to hurt me. I broke off two fish trying to call that one and I thought, well, if there's any reason I'm not going to win, it's because of that. How did you break off two fish and not break that one I seen you get out of that, that dock? I really don't know because the two I broke off hook were set. open water. One was on the hook set and the other one I was reaching down to get the net and I was just holding steady pressure on it and it just broke off. I don't know. These spots, teeth, these teeth are just violent on the spots here. Oh, yeah. I think with that light line, it just wears after a while because I have to retie after every fish. It just gets worn above the head if they eat it very good. Right. No, they do have sandpaper teeth. I know how that yeah. is. For some reason, these are like little piranhas down there. My hands are just tore up. I've been bleeding all day long from lifting those things. You don't care, though, do you? Oh, not a bit. It was well worth it. <laughs> what a day for Luke Lawson. Congratulations, a half a million dollars. Let's take a look now. Here's how we did it. Luke Lawson, the final day at the FLW Championship. The early momentum belonged to Anthony Gagliardi. Well, Mo is about to swing Luke Lawson's way. The rookie from the West Coast finds a boat dock pattern and using a light jig head and green pumpkin finesse worm, pulls in four fish in 13 minutes to get his limit. This one goes four pounds. That's the kind of bites I need. I get one or two more of those, it'll be a done deal. Does that change your mood considerably? Oh yeah, well I've just been trying to stay relaxed. I keep thinking about how much money this is and keep getting real nervous. 
Scott Martin has gone way up river to fish a jig, and that produces his fourth fish and a five pound total. I'm coming, guys. Y'all better catch him. Clawson again with number six, boosting him to 11 and a half pounds. Now he's culling and starting to feel a bit of pressure. I got a lot of time left, so I'm realizing to catch, you know, if, you, if I get four decent ones, I'd take it and go home right now. It's Clawson, Gagliardi, Jimmy Millsaps, and Mickey Bruce. A bit later, Millsaps' day is highlighted by catching a nice fish off a boat dock, literally. He gets the fish and then watches as the two by six and his rod sink out of sight. I got another rod. <laughs> I ain't got another three pounder. Bruce uses a jig head worm to climb above the 10 pound mark and keep his hopes alive. That is exactly what I saved this spot right here for in the last day, is that one right there. But the championship comes down to a three-way race between Gagliardi, Martin, and Clawson. Gagliardi saves one from a dock on the way to a 13-7 total and the lead. Clawson has the same problem and goes in after a four-pounder. What he'd later learn was the biggest catch of his career, and now he's in front. Minutes later, Martin catches two nice keepers and pulls to within six ounces of Clawson. Both pros know they have a chance to win. The Lord blessed me today, unbelievable. I'm real happy with today, and we'll just have to see how it all works out. It's a good bag. It's a good bag. Did everything I could do. I didn't miss any fish. Fished like a champion. I'm proud of myself. I'm so afraid. I, all I can think about is that one I broke off, but I'm also so excited that I could have just won half a million bucks. It's just crazy. God. This is going to be the longest three hours or whatever till we weigh in. The next time you see Luke Clawson, ask him if the wait was worth it. Luke Clawson, your career earnings in the FLW just went from 31000 to 531000 Raising that check had to be a thrill. Oh, it was incredible. I, it, just in amazement. It really still hasn't sunk into me yet. That's an incredible amount of money for somebody my age, and I don't know what I'm going to do with it. How old were you when you won your first event, Larry? Oh, me, I won uh, a BASS in 1978, but it wasn't nowhere near this amount. Have you got any major bills that you've got to pay off, or is this pretty much just a big start? Just a big start. Holy cow, how great can it be? Here's your winner, Luke Clawson <laughs> from Spokane, Washington. More to come on FLW Outdoors. Don't get no better than that, does it? <laughs> FLW Outdoors is presented by Ozark Trail. By Pedigree, healthy, happy dog for life. By Fujifilm, get the picture. And by Walmart, always low prices, always. We're back in Birmingham, Alabama, site of the 2004 FLW Championship. Taylor Carr with Larry Nixon, rejoined now by Carlton Wing, and you saw one dramatic way in Carlton. I tell you, one of the great parts about this job is being able to see the close-ups and the facial expressions on the winner, and I will never forget the look on Luke Clawson's face when he realized he had won. I tell you what, he looked around, he had tears in his eyes, a big smile on his mouth, and later on he told me, I didn't know whether I was supposed to laugh or cry. He had all those emotions just swirling in his head. A very emotional victory for Luke. He didn't think he had 14-10. No, it was a surprise for him, and he was sweating it out when Scott Martin pulled out that last fish. It was close enough that he knew it was going to be within ounces. Six ounces determined the champion. Larry, you've been on stage for those moments before. Uh, you just don't realize what a young fisherman feels when he wins an event like that and that much money and knows that his career is set for the next few years. $500,000 will pay a lot of bills, won't it? <laughs> It'll keep him going for a good long time. Even at my age, it'll pay a lot of bills. <laughs> All right, well, let's go to our last Ask a Pro of the Year. Blake Doster of Helena, Arkansas writes, What conditions are best for a deep-running crankbait? Well, we'll go to Land Lakes Pro Keith Williams. Thanks. That's a great question. Uh, one of the things I like to look for when I'm fishing a deep-diving crankbait is to have a good hard bottom, a good uh, a rocky bottom, gravel, or maybe even a mussel shell bed. I like to throw a, a crankbait that'll run deep enough to hit the bottom and, and, and bounce off the rocks and, and act erratically along the bottom. I've had great success using this technique uh, last year on Lake Wheeler. It was uh, in June post-spawn and I was using my, my deep diving crankbait technique to fish an area that was 
10 feet deep. It was a mussel shell bed. And uh, I was using a crankbait that was designed to run much deeper than that. And I would throw it out, let it bounce off the bottom real well, made, yeah. made sure I maintained good contact with the bottom. And when I felt it come across the, the drop, yeah. that's when most of my strikes occurred. All season long, we have tried to capture the behind the scenes images from the FLW Tour. This year at the FLW Championship, no different. The prestige, the pageantry, and the sheer fun are here in this week's Fuji Fine Pick segment. The FLW Championship is all about fun. So much fun, the Birmingham Convention Center was packed. The Fuji Trout Pond is always a popular attraction for the kids, as is the BF Goodrich Remote Control Track. Now on the convention floor, you can buy anything from a new pair of solar bat sunglasses to a new bass boat. As for the tournament itself, the morning of championship day brought our 12 finalists together for the final preparations. Anthony Gagliardi ties on a crankbait. Banana Boat Pro Kevin Vida works on his jig. And Larry Nixon talks with Mickey Bruce about the day ahead. When it came time to launch, BF Goodrich Pro Scott Martin gave the thumbs up. And only one other angler had a better day than Martin. He was the one holding the big checkup. Spokane, Washington's Luke Clawson. In this week's Rookie Report, we start with the Rookie of the Year, and not coincidentally, Land Lakes Angler of the Year, Shinichi Fukai, who finished 14th. Next was Glenn Brown, the Ocala, Florida native, who finished the championship in 10th place. As for the top rookie performance, well, there was that guy from Spokane again. Luke Clawson won it all. Half a million dollars should set up his second season on the tour rather nicely. At each event on the FLW Tour, you, the viewer, get to select our Eagle Claw hook set of the tournament award, and here's your winner from Lake Champlain, the final regular season event of the FLW Tour. Thanks for logging on to FLWOutdoors.com to select the Eagle Claw hook set award. Your winner from Lake Champlain is BF Goodrich Pro David Walker. He was right in the middle of an interview with our own Larry Nixon when David brought home a big one. <laughs> There's a fish now. For his catch, Eagle Claw will present David Walker with a $1,000 Walmart gift card. Congratulations to BF Goodrich Pro David Walker. Now here are our nominees for the FLW Tour Championship here at Logan Martin. You can take part in the Eagle Claw Hook Set of the Day Award. Log on to FLWOutdoors.com between now and this Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Vote for the angler you think had the best hook set. The pro with the most votes wins a $1,000 Walmart shopping card presented by Eagle Claw. Nominee number one comes from an exuberant BF Goodrich pro, Scott Martin, who knew this fish would get him near the top of the leaderboard. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo! Bow! That's what I'm talking about. Nominee number two, Jimmy Millsaps, catches more than a big fish on this hook set. He also catches what's left of a two by six. In the end, Millsaps nets the fish and not the board. Our third nominee is co-angler Jeff Stegner, who hooks a small fish and then gets a real close view. Real close. Log on to flwoutdoors.com and pick your winner. Well, guys, there is a lot to do here at the FLW Championship. A lot of great fishing and a lot of great things for the fans to do as well. We had a packed house here for the weigh-in, but we've had packed and standing room only crowds all through the convention center here for this boat show as well. It really was. There was something for all the kids to do and plenty of family events and lots of nice boats to look at, and it was a great time for everybody. The FLW Tour continues to set the trend for money. Fellows, next year, our prize money, the purse, goes to $7.6 million. You realize, Larry, the purse has gone up $2.8 million in the last four years? I hope it never stops. Maybe I'm going to win again. That's I'm not going to quit like Hank. I'm going to win one of these things. <laughs> 50th place in every event gets at least $10,000. What a payback. That's just absolutely awesome. And we are all heading toward Hot Springs, Arkansas next year in July for our big championship on Lake Hamilton. Larry, near your home waters. Yeah, but it's not one I'm real fond of. There's a lot of people live there and a lot of boat traffic. It's a small fishery, but it'll be fun. It'll be a challenge for Larry Nixon and the rest of the anglers who qualify for the 2005 championship. We are off next to the RCL championship. We'll join you from Moline, Illinois. And then after that, the Everstart championship a little bit later on this fall. Till then, thanks for watching on FLW Outdoors. Look at that bad boy. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh God.
Yeah! Right. Who's your daddy? Whoo! Man!